Um, welcome to the show. Um, we are here with Sam Heiser um, from New 55. New 55 has just come out with a Kickstarter. Well, it's been around 15 days of a Kickstarter campaign to bring back New 55 color film, which is not like the Polaroid 55, but you know, you guys have that name. So it's the New 55 color. So let me know what does New 55, where it comes from, the uh, future and the present of the company, Sam? Well, uh, thank you, Nico. It's nice to be with you. Um, right now, we're in the middle of our Kickstarter project for New 55 Color, which is a 4x5 instant peel-apart film for the 545 holders. Um, it's an artistic material. It is um, uh, a color print material, which does have a negative to make the print, but the negative is, is discarded. Unlike our previous material, New 55 PN, which is the black and white positive negative material, which is really exciting because um, it's in it's in production now and for sale now. Um, but it's a negative material, and we like the negative ourselves as working photographers. So the New 55 color that we're kickstarting now is exciting because there's quite a lot of photographers the world over who work in color and perhaps don't work in black and white or who only work in black and white a uh, part of the time. So I think it's very important for our project to um, gain a new footing with a larger market that's in, uh, that's implied by uh, the interest in, in color instant four by five materials that go alongside the black and white positive negative material. Um, you guys came out with, well, this all started as a project from Bob Crowley. I remember seeing his blog when it was just, you know, a, a blog with an idea. And this ended up turning into a previous Kickstarter that um, kickstarted, you know, your new 55 positive negative film. And that project had a ton of trouble going through because, of course, manufacturing is never as easy as one wants it to be. And um, now you're into color, which I guess got, um, how would you say, you stepped in because Fuji discontinued the peel apart. A lot of people signed to see the peel apart not discontinued. Fuji didn't go with it. And you guys found that as an opportunity or you guys already had that in mind when you started the new 55? I think it's an opportunity that's embedded in what we're doing, which was for this 545 holder installed base, of which there are hundreds of thousands of holders all over the world. And they weren't being used until we revived the the, uh, the old Polaroid Type 55 in, in our new 55 PN. Um, color is a natural, you know, photographic material. So what Fuji did didn't influence influence us that much, but it's, it's become a, a key talking point for what we're doing. Um, the, the regret that Fuji's material should be discontinued, we all feel because we uh, here, Bob, I'll speak for Bob on this one. We love uh, their color film. Fuji's always made terrific products and they continue to make a very good integral product with their Instax. But we all use the Fuji pack film. We still have our supplies <laughs> that we're working our way through. And it's a, it's a reference. It's a standard in terms of their color rendering. Uh, the ease of use of pack film is a very important thing. Um, you know, our our four by five material is dedicated to this holder. This, this doesn't present quite the same kind of ease of use as uh, pack film. And so the interest in pack film is understandable. But I think we would have probably done color regardless because Fuji had discontinued its 4x5 color material. But the, the other thing, background a little bit, Nico, is that um, pack film is expensive to make mm -hmm. and a corporation um, suffers um, to justify its continued uh, use of assets um, making something that's so expensive as pack film. Um, this is also true of our material too. You know, this, these film packets have a lot of components and um, we're, we're hand making them still. This is the old PN, the color pack film packet is quite similar and it goes in the holder. Um, and relative to pack film and certainly relative to Instax, it's, it's a very cumbersome process. You know, we're, what, what we're doing is um, 
calling on people to um, re renew interest in 4x5 photography, which is a very different prospect than even a Type 100 pack film camera, which is a bit more of a point and shoot. So we are interested in real photography, uh, artistic photography, portraiture, landscape photography that takes longer. It's some people call it slow photography. Mm -hmm. I, I, like that. I like that description. Uh, <clears throat> so the question was, would we have done color if Fuji hadn't have discontinued? No, probably would have done it anyway, because it's it's the you know it's the it's the brother of the black and white positive negative material um, or or sister. I think also another thing that's the right moment for new fifty five kind of products is today four by five photography is probably cheaper than ever, even though people complain about the prices of film or your prices of film. But the, um, let's say that the hard goods, the cameras, the lenses, film holders have never been cheaper because most people count on them as discontinued, you know, as a, at the end of it. So you see lenses as a price that you would have never seen 10 years ago. I mean, a 4x5 camera, technical or field camera have gone as cheap as they think as they will be. And this has made a lot of new people jump straight from digital to 4x5 and find your products as an instant reward. And also, if you get your negative, your positive, it's a great moment for that to try it out, to use it, even though it isn't, it's not cheap. I always say we'll never see it as cheap as it was with, you know, new 50, I mean, the old 55 or the peel part and stuff like that. But I think it's, it balances out between the price of, you know, cameras being so low and maybe the materials being a little higher. Also, color film's gotten really expensive. Nowadays, it's cheaper to shoot impossible 8x10 than a real 8x10 color. So hopefully, you know, I think you guys will come in at the time where it's, you know, people are ready to purchase a product that's not as cheap as it used to be. Yeah, Nico, you mentioned two things. There's sort of two areas you've just touched on. One is that the entrance of a, of a young photographer who's excited about the expressive po possibilities of photography, they are thinking they've got the, the camera they've, they've been working with, uh, whether instant or not. They might even have a Hasselblad because they decided to go back into the darkroom and use roll film and use 120 film. Um, the next step in terms of your shooting apparatus and tools is a four by five film even conventional sheet film which is roughly you know um this big uh and the camera is big and the camera the setup needs a tripod and a very good head um you can invest a thousand dollars in a tripod much less the whole apparatus you can also do it for a couple hundred bucks and so I, I don't think that's a reasonable objection though many people mention it as one of the reasons why they can't possibly conceive or see themselves using four by five photography. But I think for those who've identified themselves and have, have attached um, to this idea of, of expressive photography or of making a picture that is durable, making a picture that will, will bear looking at for, for many times over, or the kinds of photography and the kinds of um, gestural expressive photographs that, that bear witness again and again and again, and you always see them differently. I mean, that's a very different thing than a point and shoot. That's a very different mindset. That's a very different process. So the actual cost of getting, becoming a real photographer, like in the old days with the, you know, the, the, the dark cape and, the, and, and all the, the slow way of working, um, the lugging of boxes into the field or driving them into some remote place or getting them on a backpack. I mean, um, it's all about value, isn't it? It's about what you get out of it, what you put into it. And um, the expectations of someone uh, who just makes happy, snappy family photographs, those expectations and those demands of photography that they're used to, people, people tend to make the error of projecting their own ways of using the material onto all others. And so those expectations of photography um, don't apply to somebody who's identified themselves as wanting four by five, wanting that experience, that deeper experience, and 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 seeking the goal of the, of of a durable, uh, perhaps more artistic, uh, but certainly a, uh, 
uh, a piece of work that you can tolerate looking at again and again. The other part of your 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 comment was, new 55 is costs a lot of money. There's no question about it. But that's because it's just handmade right now. Um, one of the key pieces of the new 55 color Kickstarter project right, right now is very, very important to our progress and to us being able to go into the future is that uh, we need uh, the funding to automate the assembly and um, increase production capacity. And that, re that has the flow on effect of reducing costs. So this is a project um, currently in a very high price, low quantity production and made um, things cost what they cost and people must be paid. So the project now I think is a little bit iconoclastic. It's a little unusual for a project uh, to to reveal itself, to show. Bob's blog goes back to 2010, which I encourage all the viewers to look at. Um, he's continuing to blog in terms of the research and discovery and some of the marketing things we're doing. Um, search out a new 55 film blog or blog spot. I'll, li I'll link it below because I think it's very yeah. interesting to read. Um, yeah. And, and it, it, it's, it's a project that in one of our intentions to, to doing this was to, to determine what the market was for four, for a four by five instant film. And we, we thought we, we, we had to do that being transparent as transparent as possible to sort of open the kimono and show exactly, you know, how the sausage is made, but also show, how things are made people you know millennials young people have grown up in an area era where when everything is automated and everything comes as an app there's no weight to things um, this is a manufacturing project we have material goods that have to be sourced um, the old type 55 polaroid instant film went out of production and there are components that are not only not available now uh, but they're illegal because of the chemical content. Mm -hmm. So we did have to reinvent this thing, the PN. Mm -hmm. And the color is based upon uh, a new way of doing things that uh, um, the Impossible Project uh, has been working on. Uh, we've also tested the color market with some of the old P3 Polaroid material that our, our friends and colleagues next door, the 20 by 24 studios, people have made available to us, which is transferable by the way if there's any more p3 still in people's hands they could try to do some emulsion lift or uh, watercolor transfers with but the, the the there is a lack of understanding today of how things are made manufacturing jobs this is a currently big topic in the political discussion you know all the jobs have gone offshore americans don't make things anymore well we do in ashland massachusetts that's good. So yeah, so, so so just to to conclude the point, we new fifty five is expensive and for good reason, and we want to expose the users to that. We want the users, the photographers who want to use four by five instant film, peel apart film, to feel the responsibility. We want, as Bob says, the onus on the users, and that was really a core reason why we chose to kickstart it in the beginning, and we're kickstarting the color now. Um, the responsibility has to be placed in the hands of the people who care the most. Okay. So talking about the Kickstarter, um, you guys, I didn't know the color was um, positive only. So there's no fixing like in the black and white, just peel apart and you got your positive and that's your picture you remained. Um, I know the black and white one has a, basically a four by five black and white sheet inside the um, envelope or the sleeve, and then the pod develops. It's probably the monobath um, R3, if I'm not wrong, um, that you guys also sell as a monobath for a normal film. And um, then you have your negative, which you know you, you can keep and you can fix in the field. So this would be an easier product to shoot out in the field because once you peel it, you don't have to fix anything. You just have it as a positive. It's a key point, Nico, so you, you, you make. The new 55 color that we're kickstarting now is a print only, so there is no fixing of a negative. There's no um, dealing with the liquids and the trays. So it's a bit closer to a pack film experience. It's not certainly not a, it's a single shot material, just like the PN. And you mentioned the architecture of the film packet. I'll show you the black and white positive negative example here. Um, 
This is this is the sleeve you mentioned, the outer mm -hmm. the outer piece. This is the tongue assembly, which it ha has the the black and white negative on it. This is the clip, and this is the tongue, and the negative and the pod, which contains the reagent that is attached by adhesive to the tongue assembly. Now, this pod in the in the new 55 PN contains a reagent that's not not quite the same chemically as our R5 monobath developer, but the concept is a monobath. So when you actually process uh, an exposed um, shot with this film and you pull it through the rollers, you pull it through and the, the pod deploys the chemistry in between the, the receiver sheet, which is inside here. This is the print. That's the one you is, guys use, that super big coding machine, isn't it? <laughs> the, the thing, the receiver yeah. sheet is, the, is, the, is, what, is what is produced, coded th three different times. And the thing is the machine that we, we, we developed, Charles Fenrock and, and Bob developed the machine to, to uh, provide the coding that um, we had a flaky vendor who um, failed in, in, in getting a, uh, a, pro a, pro a production ready coding on the receiver sheet. So we had to become experts or to some degree expert, expert in coding the material that we need to use and we need to be able to test different coatings and it, it would have been very expensive to outsource and very risky and indeed it did increase our risk. So, so what one of the things we learned through the new 55 PN process was um, how to coat print material. Um, it, it's a point that's easily lost, but we've learned a lot since we first kickstarted New 55 PN in 2014. And we've embarked, we've been doing some research in color to get to the point now of kickstarting the New 55 color material. And uh, we continue to share our learnings and, you know, transparently blog about all the things we learned and where we're at. Um, New 55 PN is fairly complex, and one of the difficult aspects of using it is that we have a 1960 technology in the holder. So the holder is a system of moving parts, and it has the processing rollers there. There's a number of different things that move inside it. The packet, film packet system, it's a system of its own. And when you have a system coming together, a system of systems, you have all these opportunities for tolerance var variances to, to create trouble. So we are um, facing those very, you know, very well in, in my view, uh, but it doesn't make using the new 55 PN very easy. So when we, when we get new 55 color up and running, we'll be investing in some automation that will improve pod production. Charles and Jen and Mick are working on uh, variations in the, in the packet system that will come out in the color product, but feed back into new 55 PN black and white. So um, it's a good time to be pushing that responsibility onto the users where, where there'll be very substantial gains in the way, the way the system works with um, the holder. Also th then, so I, as I said, the positive um, comes out of color and you got a positive negative on the PN. Um, you guys in the color, does it have a sheet of color film inside? Or it doesn't have it does it. have a negative inside, but the negative is discarded. The negative is needed to transmit the uh, the color dyes over to the paper, to the print side. You found so um, a, a, like um how do you say um, someone that can source it because you're so you, you also I remember when you finished your PN, you guys had to buy around ten thousand sheets of black and white film, and now if you do successfully, which I hope finish your color, you would also need. A consistent supply of color negative sheet film, and uh, nowadays you basically have Kodak in the game. Um, I don't know if there's any other players in color negative four by five film. Or you guys, I remember seeing a video. You were trying to find a way to cut the was it color negative film that you have like a machine you built too to try to split it into rolls of um, I guess would be four inch wide film, a little bit smaller probably. Yeah, you saw the conversion. Bob, I think, blogged about that when he rigged up on the lathe a way of slitting uh, a long roll. So the roll of negative material and even the receiver sheet comes in. It can come in four-foot-wide rolls. 
and getting a slitter is something that may be uh, in, in the future for us because we may be sourcing material in, in roll sheet form, which would be good because we, we it would give us the flexibility to, to make four by five componentry or any other size that might be necessary, possibly pack film, possibly larger formats. Um, we are um, being supplied by the Impossible Project on New 55 Color. So their receiver sheet and their negative would, would play a, a role in this and having a reliable uh, vendor relationship with the Impossible is something we look very much forward to. Oh, it's important to know, you know, that your product doesn't rely on someone that's going to get out of the game anytime soon. Like Fuji might get out of the game of not all film, but maybe negative film. Kodak, you know, you never know what's going to happen as Kodak's been going up and down with the market. And um, Impossible is pretty steady. And I feel, you know, it's a good thing to know that they're behind and supporting New 55. I'm sure Florian helped with... Um, you know, the communication between you guys. I'm sure you already had communication when you started New 55. Um, and basically, it's just the materials that go into the new color one. Um, you guys have found everyone that will supply and you can continue making. I re remember reading that you guys might need to make a new pod machine. Are you using your own or the 20 by 24 studio one or is it someone else that's providing the pods? We are uh, looking to source an, a, a new pod machine for because the scale of our pod will be smaller than the 20 by 24s. But up until now, through perhaps another run or two, um, 20 by 24 will supply our pods. Um, that is a pod that's been converted down from the 20 inch wide pod, which is bigger in all dimensions and also has certain volume characteristics. And it's time for us to move into a, a, a machine and a setup where we control our pod dimensions and we, we have the freedom to test different sizes and different combinations. <clears throat> so um, the new 55 color Kickstarter gives us a chance to, to uh, invest in pod manufacturing automation of our own, which gives us a lot of flexibility that's, that's, that's due. And it gives us better control over the, the performance of the film packet system too. Okay. And um, so once you guys meet the Kickstarter, what would be like the first steps once you finish? If it comes successful, which I hope it does. Assuming we're successful at Kickstarter <laughs> with New 55 Color, um, the investment in the pod machine is one thing. Uh, I know Charles and the team are working on um, uh, different uh, approaches to the uh, film packet assembly and uh, the, the dimensionality and the, and the features of this uh, that, that allow it to perform very, very well with the holder. Um, we will be sourcing either converted goods in the size that we finally need it or possibly raw roll goods, and we'll need to convert that down. Um, color is um, just as complex as the PN, even though we don't have a, it doesn't produce a, a useful negative. Um, there is a possibility in the future. Um, and an interest here to develop something that's never existed in photography before, and that might be a uh, uh, an instant uh, color negative film, which is quite exciting if you think about it. The the closest anyone has gotten to that is the uh, uh, using bleach to to uh, retrieve the Fuji negs, mm -hmm. uh, which which were very exciting. But if we could have a packet system that delivered. Uh, that or a positive negative color. The other implication of that in the future is um, roll film, 120 or 35 millimeter film, color, uh, not quite instant film, but color negative film that is developed by monobath in a daylight tank. Okay, so it's it's not quite as complex uh, or uh, the time to processing isn't, isn't quite so much as sending your color film away as you do now. So co <clears throat> color instant film with a monobath in, in roll form is something we're excited as photographers about. Um, so the future implications of us going into color <clears throat> means that we learn quite a bit about dye transfer processes and about how, how that works. <clears throat> and um, uh, we are photographers. This is, this is one of the things that people forget. Um, 
we came to this because this is material that we wanted to use for our, in our own practices. And um, perhaps we came to photography a little too late to have enjoyed fully the, the old instant pro products. Um, but it is now a, um, it is a small world, the photography manufacturing world. Um, you mentioned Kodak, you didn't mention Ilford. FOMA has I a factory. I was talking about colors, so that's why I was leaving out the black and white. Well, there, there, there is a, a film has has rebounded. Analog photography has rebounded strongly since 2012, and I think the manufacturers are enjoying the, the fruits of that. But we can't um, take it for granted by any means. And uh, there will be times when analog photography uh, won't enjoy the benefits of, of of such goodwill and the wellspring of of, of young people's excitement, because it will be eventually it will just become taken for granted once again. Um, uh, I don't believe that's totally the case, but there will be ups and downs, and I think there will be different periods of consolidation in the future in, among analog film manufacturers. One of the things that exists is that uh, Kodak's film manufacturing is subsidized by its cinema film production. Should Cinefilm go out of production at Kodak, that would threaten, I think, this is my personal opinion, um, the, the sheet films that they make. And Kodak makes some of the best films ever made, mm -hmm. much less available today. So there will be some ups and downs. Uh, there is a historic precedent for this uh, renaissance, uh, this, this, this excitement about analog materials. And it has to do with the 19th century uh, arts and crafts movement which happened in the second half of, of the 19th century, 1800, 1860s, say, loosely, through 1910, before World War I, when uh, people were feeling the anxiety and the uh, tension and the alienation of automation uh, from the Industrial Revolution. Things were moving faster. Change came upon society. Technologies came. Um, so quickly, and it's very much mirrored by the the experience and the anxiety and the alienation we feel when with the internet today, um, which is an information revolution, but it speeds everything up. And so I think that when I, when I say four by five photography is slow photography, it's with it's with that in mind that there is every cause for people to seek ways of slowing down because the world just seems to go so, so fast. And so I think that we're involved, this, this analog film renaissance is really a part of a, a secular trend rather than a cyclical trend. It's a secular trend that may play out over tw in the next 20 or 30 years, uh, as did the um, uh, arts and crafts movement over a period of 60 or 70 years before. This mm -hmm. one won't be as long because things are moving so, so fast. So fast. Um, do you find that in the customers that you are getting right now with uh, a new 55 PN and the small batches you've done of the color are people that shot um, instant film in 4x5 before or they're just totally new to the game? Because I'm, I'm sure most people dropped you know, film as everyone did years ago. Not everyone, but most people did. And some came back, but I'm sure most of your customers are newcomers to instant film or four by five, or there's some people that are returning. A bit of both. A bit of both. I think the uh, the people who are coming to large format photography because of new 55 film, and there are, are a substantial number of people doing that. They have an advantage because they don't remember how the old material used to behave. And there are quite a few material differences in, in New 55 PN, for example, as with the, now the color um, that shock the old people because sometimes older people don't, like myself, we get a little set in our ways and we, we, get, we, we have ways of our brain works a certain way and it's hard to change that. It's hard to adapt to the new, to the new way. Young people are a little more flexible and the young people are also quite motivated because imagine they haven't had the large format the ground glass experience you know you see that image upside down and backwards in the ground glass as you focus under the dark cloth and it is it is as is, is, is at least as exciting uh, as the watching the first black and white print come up in the, in the developer you know 
the kids, I taught a class in the dark room at the art center where I lived. And uh, without fail, that experience that the young youngsters, people of all ages, when they first see that image coming in the developer is, wow. Well, so four by five photography has that same effect. So you can imagine there's a, there's a difference between the jaded, wise, old Ansel Adams character who's mm -hmm. like, yeah, I've been there, done that. Okay, well, good. I'm glad about instant film. Okay, I'll use some of this. But they'll have more trouble actually figuring out how the film packet system works in the holder um, than the young people. Uh, but we're glad for everybody. And I think this is a material that um, um, uh, speaks for itself. Uh, by no means are we happy with its uh, performance yet. Um, nor should should we be expected to be. I think if people, you know, if if people are um, honest and um, uh, take what we say at face value and read the blog and and see and, and t take enough interest to catch up with where we're at, a project as underfunded as this, with a market that is still questionable, we don't know what the size of the market is because our execution. Uh, it will drive the size of the market. It's up to us. It's really on us and it's really on the users to understand a project like this and where we are. And, and um, people, uh, users have been very tolerant. The high price is a big turnoff. Um, uh, packet failures, big turnoff. Uh, but those who have, um, you know, come back for more, and we have many users who, have, who regularly buy so many boxes, it is expensive, but they're not they're not put off by um, spreads that are a little inconsistent uh, because they, they they think of what they're spending on the on the material as part of the whole experience. And they are producing some of the best negatives they've ever seen in their lives in any material. And then that has to do with the special um, nature of the way uh, an instant film and an instant monobath type reagent develops. A negative and transfers to the print. Um, just one other point, Nico, was the um, the print is also improving in quality. The negative is improving in quality. The packet system is improving in quality every week. <clears throat> there are changes we make to the to the system uh, that that enter inventory in real time. And the disadvantage we're we're up against is that um, the film examples. Uh, that we see online, whether it's Instagram or on Facebook, they tend to be <clears throat> two to eight months old in terms of the film. So it's very hard to see what the current um, quality is and performance. And so we're constant. I, I run the support line, support at new55.net. And um, if there, if people have any problems with the uh, their, their holder, holders are hard to get in good good condition, which is why we refurbish them. Mm -hmm. And we we don't make any money on our refurbished holders because we want to get really good, best working holders in the hands of users. Um, the holder system is tricky to get used to. Once you master it, people are regularly getting five out of five hits out of a box. Um, and the spreads have improved. Lately, I'm seeing spreads that are as good as ever. Uh, the D-Max and D-Min of the print mm -hmm. are, are very strong. Um, earlier, that wasn't the case. And the negative is, is, is superb, as always. And um, we do have a lot of video tutorials. Many people are so excited when they get their film that they uh, are immediately getting to, to shooting and they forget some of the tips and tricks that are available. So if anybody needs to refresh their memory on tips of handling the holder and the film packet system, they can go to our website, new55.net, and look for uh, under learn, learn how. There's a whole page of video. Mm -hmm. and an archive there too so it's 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 our intention to make it as easy to get up and running and once people do if their four by five habit is substantial and they're constantly uh, uh out there with their camera they um they there are people out there who who it's like riding a bike okay and um i know you guys started off based from your kickstarter sending rewards and then you've been doing um, alliances with different provider. I mean, I would say stores around the world. Now, SuperSense carries your film. I know Mago Direct does too. 
are you feeling like um, spreading around worldwide and people having that product at their stores, even if it's not maybe a local store you can walk into because that's kind of gone. Um, does that help in the fact that people are buying it more? Because I mean, I live in Europe and shipping all the way here is always a problem. Now, Michael Direct and um, SuperSense have it and one can buy it and have it available sooner as also the shelf life is not very long. As you say, you never know who's shooting, how old the material is. And you're also important for customers to have that product the most recent. As you say, it's going upgrading every day or every week. Um, do you feel there's um, a bigger network for New 55 and that's helping spread the product into the market? I think it's, um, it's important from my perspective, um, you know, running the business of New 55 Film, um, that our product is easy to get. That means it's um, relatively inexpensive to ship it somewhere, or if 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 you live in some far off place, that 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 that's at least as painless as possible. So it's 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 on us to do the best we can. And because uh, so many, especially photo dealers, reached out to us early, I thought you know we we ought to take advantage of their excitement and interest and um, stock with them particularly in Europe where costs are so high and they have VAT, we do not. Um, it's just a different system. So um, shooting a specialty material that's very expensive is even more expensive in Europe um, as things generally are in Europe. But I think it, to get the material closer to the end user is, 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 is always a good idea. Um, it does actually help. There is an intangible benefit like you suggest with the question. Uh, so getting someone like Doc Caps, you know, and Super Sense involved, you know, Doc creates kind of an excited energy around everything he, he's involved with. Um, so we're very pleased that, that Doc is with us as our just European and Asian distributor. Mm -hmm. um, Super Sense has a special thing going on. Um, they their their involvement commitment to analog to sensual experiences in in the crafts and creativity are is unique um i can't even think of any any similar emporium like doc's super sense in vienna in the united mm -hmm. states there's there's nothing i can think of um there will be i believe you know you can buy your vinyl records here uh i've my wife and I sold off all of our vinyl and we were glad to because we've started collecting again. You know, our tastes have evolved, but the vinyl pressings are better than they were in the 70s and 80s when we bought our first records. The, the vinyl was horrible, thin, badly pressed, uh, distorted, just not good. Um, so I think, like I say, in, in the context of this, his, these, these historical comparisons uh, with the arts and crafts movement, um, there is a thirst for real palpable experience in the age of email and the internet. There is a, there is a natural and understandable desire for a tactile experience. Um, and doc is leading, leading the charge like, like the Pied Piper. Um, do you guys, um, at the current production you have, as you say, it's all manually made the coding machine, the, um, the pods and the insect like in, how do you say putting it all together in that dark tent with the uh, ultraviolet cameras? I think. Um, okay, you guys are having a problem to keep up with con consumers buying it, or you guys can be able to stock because if it has a short shelf life, you guys have to have a you know an equilibrium to keep up and not overproduce, I guess, so it doesn't shit on sit, um, sit on the shelves. Yeah, our production um, capacity is much higher than our, our current production. Um, and we don't sell enough to actually sustain the business right now. Mm -hmm. um, so we have to improve the value of the product with the color and then PN again. But um, our, our production capacity with the hand assembly uh, right now is higher than it needs to be. But if we hit our targets in terms of quality and performance after the investments in color, I think we'll have to do some uh, additional um, 
uh, upgrades in our in our manufacturing capacity and not and and it will continue to be hand assembled until we actually can spend real money on the kinds of uh, um, assembly machines that uh, that are that that the the thing is this market will never be as big as the Polaroid the market was with Polaroid and Fuji and one of the problems Fuji experienced was that their capacity was way too big for what what happened after um, uh, motor vehicle uh, uses, for instance, photography, you know, uh, identity cards and industrial uses um, like uh, police and insurance. When, that, when those aspects of that, that instant peel apart market, Packville market went away, Fuji's capacity was so big that uh, it, they wouldn't, to, to fill the current demand, they would have had to run it for only a short period of time. And that is, it's just not a, doesn't economically work. So I, it remains to be seen if we'll invest in some of the big machinery to assemble. Um, I, I'm willing to be surprised by the level of interest in four by five mm -hmm. uh, photography, but uh, we'll see how where it takes us. I think the key is to there's, you're always managing the business, the investments, and the capacity in a way that uh, addresses the, your 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 plans for the next uh, 12 to 18 months. So if we're successful at the color Kickstarter, we have some investments that are going to help us a great deal. Um, and as you grow a business like this, you go through these years where you're growing at 100 percent. That's what a startup usually experiences. And then your your improvements in automation really improve things around the margins as each one incrementally comes on. So we're still in that fast growth. Uh, period where one investment in a single machine will make a very substantial impact in terms of the quality and the performance. Um, and, and so, um, you know, that's an environment that's uh, a little hair raising uh, for a business person, but it's just something that we manage uh, like, like a small business manage, manages its cash. Uh, we'll make an investment in the machine and we'll, we'll dial capacity accordingly. Um, and so that's that's the way it goes. And I think one of the exciting things about being along for the ride in these Kickstarter projects is you can see where the money is spent. Mm -hmm. Talking about that, I know that um, in the Kickstarter, you guys were very clear on where money would be going. One of the things that I think raised a few questions is that a pretty big amount was going towards wages. I, I understood you just said before that it's not... Um, economically viable as a business yet does this mean you guys are kind of working just for the sake of producing a future of new 55 and you guys you know i mean of course like everyone else has to make a living and is that gonna balance things out to maybe start um clean with the new 55 color and pn well uh people have to be paid mm -hmm. and so a project like this um Managing cash um, is a very important part to allowing us to uh, make the purchases of components necessary, uh, pay the people who manufacture uh, the product. Um, nobody would would uh, deny them the need to do that. Um, so um, Bob and I have both taken out of our pockets to keep this project going. And I, I, our goal has always been to grow it into a self-sustaining business. And we want this material to be around. Um, so there is, you know, the alternative, some people say, well, you, you'd norm, you wouldn't normally kickstart these things. You would, you would get a venture capital firm to come in. Now, VCs are just as risk averse, perhaps more risk averse than, than most people. So they'll show up when the money isn't really needed. Um, but it's, it's our irrational desire to have material that we want to work with. So we're willing to sacrifice um, uh, our time and our energy um, to make this a, 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 a product, a, a family of products that can be around for a long time. And I think that uh, whatever it takes um, to, to get us there, it, often it, it means we, t we take out of our own pockets to keep, mm -hmm. to keep the lights on and to keep the people paid so we can get to that next level. Yeah, well, it, it's starting as a business and manufacturing with all the trouble and the handmade. It's, it can't be easy, that's for sure. And I think the blog is an important way to read how far 
you guys have gone because people see new 55 and just think you guys came into play you know like six months ago don't realize you know the whole history um and talking about how it is today do you guys have seen an increase in interest because i know the first kickstarter of course raised um the quantity you wanted you 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 paid your rewards and now you are producing new 55 regularly for buyers do you uh, have you seen a raise in um amount of consumers buying it after that first initial kickstarter is every day being a little bit more people you know show it to other people through social media i think instagram's playing a big game in um spreading you know analog of photography even though it's the opposite but it works very well hand in hand as a tool do you feel that you know it's growing the market's growing even though it still is not a big market absolutely i think each year you see uh, good comparisons if people are interested in the history um, we do something every uh, twice a year we do something we call the spending report and they can it's on the blog there's right. a very good page um, um, for example the 2016 year-to-date spending report which we show where we, where we are it's, it's an example of our philosophy of transparency right we want to show where the money coming in is coming mm -hmm. from and what the what the money is being spent on and ever since we we first started um, the project uh, on that first Kickstarter in uh, May of 2014, we've done a spending report. And that's a good way to sort of catch up with what's really taken place and what's what's happening. Um, I think with with a with a with markets like this, with technology and investments in assets to manufacture something, you have to drive quality improvements constantly. And the the challenge is, is in front of us to do that. And then, then we can drive the price to uh, mat, meet the value. And the price over the long run has to come down for this project to be successful, but we can't comment on what, what price will, will be next. What happens is you end up ha uh, having people waiting for the price to come down. Yeah. And, then, and that's been the case. Uh, it's understandably the case at $75 a box of five is 15 or so dollars each. Um, we need people to pay the high price now, but we know that that's a small select group of people who are willing to make the sacrifice, who take take the responsibility. And there, there's a very important part of the market who are the young, up and coming photographers who don't have as much money and can't take the responsibility to support a project like this. And there's the people in the middle who would be using the material if it were ten dollars a sheet for example and so we have to find a way to to get to to those points and we're, we're we're seeking to do it through the automation and through the design and engineering of the product and the performance of, of the material um, i think that um, the market could be a 20 million dollar market and i define the market as a as a, a large format instant film market mm -hmm. possibly ex that excludes pack film if that should be in developed in the future by someone um, but 20 million is is a good is a good business for a small business well it's a good, um, it's, it's, a, it's a good business if it is enough to cover the cost if you're selling 20 million and you're spending 30 well yeah after a certain point you can be assured we're not going to be involved in an unprofitable business of and course we'll just, we'll just go we'll, we'll find something else to do uh, but that's the nature of things, and that's a healthy mm -hmm. service. So uh, basically, and I understand this, and I've always thought about New 55 as an investment towards the future of instant film, 4x5, and hopefully maybe in a future pack film, because that's what people, you know, most people used. It's it's an easier way to shoot, as you said. But most people don't see that they don't support maybe today either with the color or the PN, because I mean, I'm sure if your color doesn't success, you guys will keep on making PN till either you can't do it anymore or it's cheap enough, it's successful and you guys can keep on making it, hopefully. Do you, um, people don't see that and also that they don't see that it's coming towards a cheaper product, as you said, you can automate it and make it cheaper and then more people shoot it. So 
that what would you recommend for those people who are doubting on shooting this and buying your products and are waiting to see if they're cheaper or if you guys are getting better because you know every batch is a little better would you recommend um something that you feel is you know like a way of selling the product like what would you say to recommend like i've never shot no 55 i wish i would have living in europe it's every time i want to buy it i think my kids need something and i can't afford it so what would you say to you know convince someone like me who is waiting or not waiting but you know always has an excuse not to put the money down it's a great question nico um you know four by five photography is just awesome and uh everyone who's interested in photography who's making that you know epiphany of how it's hard to define exactly why photography is so special sometimes for us. We don't really think about it that much, but um, it is existential in my opinion. And so when you make that realization that large format photography would be interesting for one of your goals, for me it was, I got a Graflex because, not because I wanted sheet film, <clears throat> four by five film, it was because I wanted to straighten the lines in the architecture that I was shooting. It was, that, it was that discovery that I just needed a little bit of front rise. And so I went out and got a Graflex crown graphic. So everyone has their different, everyone exists in a different cycle in their relationship to, to this, to these mediums called photography. And I, I don't try to sell people, um, you know, against their will into something that is more, it is not suitable to what they want to do. I think I think we're we're just here to improve this um, this product, and so that it's it's a good opportunity for those who who want to get there. Um, I think that um, four by five photography isn't for everybody, and we and we've always known that. But new fifty five film is actually providing an on ramp to make something that's very inconvenient, a little less con inconvenient is uh, a good thing. And it's, it's bearing out in what we see of behavior and people are, are asking me all the time, Sam, what camera? So I have some blog posts on the Sam's advice section of the website that says, you know, there's three kinds of cameras for you to consider. There's the old press cameras are great. There's a rail camera, which is more of a studio type technical mm -hmm. camera with a long bellows uh, and there's view cameras which are the most versatile of all kinds so it depends what you want to do if you visualize doing portraiture your camera choice will be one thing if you visualize doing a certain kind of landscape if you visualize doing landscape trip ditches in portrait format you know you, that 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 will dictate to you your material and we're certainly happy to spend any amount of time you know with you guiding you on on the most the best value for doing that uh, and new 55 is, is, you know, from a business point of view, we're a monopoly. Nobody else does this. Didn't Steve Jobs and Edwin Land say that you want to always do something that no one else is doing? Well, here it is. And uh, I defy Fuji to try to do this. They wouldn't bother. They can't be bothered. The market's too small. Mm -hmm. um, the the that means that we have a special opportunity in a short window of time to bring this business into uh, position and get the price down and, and the performance and value up to where the market uh, we can actually discover a, a profitable niche and 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 what what what's so gratifying about doing this is that people come back to, to us and they say you know I love what you're doing and that this is addictive and um, you know, and we're finding out that we have had an impact on four by five photography. There are more people getting their old grandfather's view camera out of the chest in the attic uh, than there were in 2013 before we started. Mm -hmm. And um, that's good. That's exciting. And that's one of the reasons we do workshops. And we have a workshop here in Belmont at Digital Silver Imaging who've been terrific hosts for our monthly workshop. And we want to provide a one day experience where people get to, you know, deep dive out down to their elbows in new 55 and they get to produce some beautiful work, get some negatives to take home, some, some positives to take home. Uh, I'm working on a two day format and I, if, if, if everything works out well, I'd love to do a five day in Montana with a group of people and have a blast. You know? 
Mm -hmm. so, so we work hard to, to make sure that, that, that the material is easy to get. Uh, it's easy to learn, to get up that learning curve, and that workshop is really perfectly suited for that because the key, the key is to get yourself involved, and immersed in it. And for me, it took me two or three boxes of film before I gained the confidence of knowing how the packet system worked and knowing my holder. Now I'm a, the world's expert in disassembling the holder. And you, can't, you, can't, you can't do it faster than I, even if you tried. I didn't so, know. I didn't know it could be undone if, like that. If you want to learn how to manage the 545 holder, Nikos, um, you can um, come to the workshop at DSI, or you can just call me and I'll or hit the support line and I'll help you figure out why your packet uh, got stuck or mm -hmm. how to get the gate back into your holder. There's a trick with a credit card and a rubber band. Okay. We have videos for that too. Okay. Okay. Um, Sam, just to finish things off. Um, so, well, thanks for talking with me and, um, it's been an hour. I will probably post most Holy of it. Smokes. It's been, a, yeah, no, no problem. It's just, I feel like, you know, we could keep on going for hours. Um, thank you for talking with me and, um, I hope people watch this and support your Kickstarter, the, the color, um, new 55 is um you know reality and you guys can get that automation for the color and the black and white which is necessary to bring the price down to bring more people in which is always you know that circle that goes around um is there anything else you want to say to people or people that are going to watch this whole hour no nico you know i want to thank you for your interest and for your time mm -hmm. and uh, just tell the people that uh it's important for them if they're interested in keeping peel apart films alive and they want to have a chance to shoot this amazing four by five instant uh, peel apart film, go to go support us at, at new 55 color at Kickstarter. And it, the Kickstarter project runs until November 18th. So as of today, it's another couple of weeks, but mm -hmm. uh, we need you in there now. 